Is fat shaming the last acceptable form of discrimination? Loads of things don't change when you get fat. Your shoe size, your karaoke ability, or having tons of sex. I should know. I've been fat and thin loads of times. Yo-yoing from a size 18 to a 14, then 22 to an 8, 14 and back up to 22 again. Like many fat people, I'm an expert at losing weight. I'm not great at running for a bus with no bra, but my size doesn't affect my ability to do most other things. And I have money to spend, so why is it that I'm made to feel so unwelcome by businesses? We know that advertising loves thin, beautiful people, but even fitness is marketed using skinny models, excluding the very people who are being told to exercise. If a fat person can't even get clothes for the gym, how do we expect them to be motivated to go? And the high street continues to size chubsters out. 16 is the average size for women in the UK. Weird then that availability drops off a cliff above 80. Or not weird if you're Jamelia, who recently said that she thinks that anyone above or below a certain size should feel too uncomfortable to shop on the high street. In high street stores, you're catering for the average woman. There's a healthy range. And I don't believe they should be providing clothes for below that range or above that range. The CEO of Abercrombie & Fitch even admitted he doesn't want large people wearing his clothes. He said, a lot of people don't belong in our clothes and they can't belong. Are we exclusionary? Absolutely. Some businesses are getting increasingly brazen. Recently, Southwest Trains made this announcement on a busy train from Basingstoke. Can I ask that only slim people sit on the three-seaters? If you are fat, then it is simply not going to work. The message from Transport to Topshop is that we're not welcome, but this could be bad for business when, according to Mintel, the plus-size clothing market will be worth $8.2 by 2017. That's a lot of big fat pounds brands are missing out on. Worse, this attitude is mirrored in our streets and playgrounds. People will think that if a big regulated company can actively discriminate against fat people, why can't I? And this is exactly why UCL's Dr Sarah Jackson thinks weight should be added to the 2010 Equality Act as a protected characteristic. Or else the message to people is that weight discrimination is socially acceptable. And remember, we're not just talking clothes and train seats here. Fat people are less likely to be offered a job and more likely to be low paid. Some might think that stigmatising big people encourages weight loss. Wrong. Research shows that shaming actually causes people to to put on weight. It's not about tough love. This is tough hate and it makes people fatter. After all, fat isn't a lifestyle choice that's easy to change. Being fat isn't simply about greed. Genetic factors and the food industry messing with our appetites mean some of us get bigger than others. And there are psychological and physiological factors so strong that people continue to be fat in spite of the stigmatisation our society doles out. In a world where we're constantly tempted by consumerism, we see control over impulses as virtuous. And so, according to psychotherapist Susie Orbach, we assign fat people the contempt we feel for our own desires. So if you think it's okay to pick on a fatty, not only is there a growing number of people who think you should end up in court, but you may be signalling to the world that you're the one who's hungry. Racism is a business. For centuries, it has underpinned global economic exploitation. And like any successful business idea, it needs great marketing, PR, and advertising to ensure lasting success.